presenting my screen. Just let me know whether it is visible to you. Is it visible? Yes, uh, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. So today we'll discuss main educational institutions of higher education during ancient uh, India. And there, are, there were, uh, you know, many renowned universities of uh, uh, ancient India, which are having, which are having very, you know, a prouder history than uh, their counterparts in uh, ancient Western world. Some of the universities, like uh, universities of Alexandria, Athens, uh, and many more. So uh, in those uh, name, the first came is Takshashila. You know, Takshashila actually was the capital of Gandhar kingdom. Gandhar uh, is a region which at present it, you can uh, understand uh, that it's some part of Afghanistan and Pakistan. So Takshashila uh, University was considered to be the first university in the world. And it flourished from, you know, uh, some 600 or 500 BCE uh, to 500 or 400 BCE, like near about, you can say, roughly 7th century BCE. And uh, this university uh, was famous for uh, medical studies and many more uh, subjects are uh, were there. Uh, roughly there are more than 50, you can say 50 subjects, uh, including Vedas, languages, grammar, philosophy, medicine, even surgery, archery, politics, warfare you know, astronomy, accounts, commerce, and music, dance also, and they are including so many art, uh, performing arts. So all those uh, subjects, including uh, the mathematical calculations, some analytical uh, approach towards some logical, uh, you know, problems. So all those uh, subjects were taught uh, in this university. And this university uh, was proper, popular for, you know, Brahmanical and also for Buddhist uh, education. And, but it is not, uh, you know, properly centralized, you can say, a university. So <clears throat> it was described like in some Buddhist uh, tales, Jatak Katha, you have heard that name. So there it uh, is described. Somewhat. The minimum uh, entry age was uh, around 16 years or more than 16 years. So it attracted uni students from you know other uh, zones uh, other than uh, what we are called what we call India, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Other than that means uh, it's uh, Greece, some portion of you know uh, Africa or uh, Syria, then China, uh, but that uh, in that university they are they might be having some entrance criteria, but there was no exam system as such. So uh, they learn the things and excel themselves in a particular field, and because no exam, so no degree, no diploma, and no caste distinction also. Now, main scholars uh, of uh, this university of Takshashila, we all know about, you know, Kautilya. Kautilya um, is the author of Arthashastra. And this Arthashastra, uh, you know, it covers all many uh, fields like economic policies, military strategies. You know, the Kautilya is also known as Chanakya or Vish Vishnu Gupta. So all three names. Uh, belongs to the same person and uh, he was the teacher and guardian of Emperor Chandra Gupta Maurya. So uh, he is having a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, a renowned name in our history, in our uh, higher education system, this name Kautilya. Then Panini, 
panini is uh, was a grammarian for you know uh, sanskrit language so he wrote uh, this many scripts and you know many uh, grammatical uh, grammar regarding uh, the sanskrit language then charaka charaka name uh, mostly associated with the uh, you know medical or surgery kind of thing and he wrote charaka sanhita which was the you know uh, an ancient uh, indian medicine uh, that covers ayurveda then one more uh, was there vishnu sharma uh, who was the author and compiler of panchatantra so all these you know main scholars of uh, this university takshashila all right and the second Man, one is yes panini the book was panini hello panini was uh, the scholar name of the scholar S sorry name of the scholar na name of the person who studied in takshashila okay so he, he does he wrote any book a book uh, as such uh, It, he worked on grammar like sanskrit grammar but the name of that particular uh, book i didn't uh, i don't remember at present but it is called some but, but it is based amara on kosha the amara kosha ma amara kosha by any chance well that i is a sanskrit dictionary ah uh, maybe maybe but i don't know uh, don't remember the name of that uh, grammar book okay okay ma okay yeah tomorrow i'll see and tell you now the second uh, uh, most uh, you know renowned university or you can say educational institution was uh, like nalanda uh, and this nalanda university is uh, uh educational center of international model comparable in the universalism of its thought wide range of studies and you know uh, this is also one of the greatest universities uh, of asian time you can compare uh, this university uh, with today modern time universities like oxford cambridge you know harvard so such type of status uh, this university had uh, in ancient uh, period so it uh, has been considered as one of the great first great universities in recorded history and uh, one uh, chinese scholar uh, huin sang came here in 7th century and he wrote many things about this university so in uh, ancient nalanda university it is uh, like located near rajgraha in uh, bihar province and this is mainly a buddhist center of learning from uh, 4 to 7 ce to uh, you know 1197 near about 12th century ce so it progressed a lot during uh, gupta dynasty and uh, in 2010 nalanda university was set up in bihar as a central university with uh, japan china and thailand and laos singapore australia by collaborating in various manners so these countries uh, are helping in different uh, you know uh, area to support that uh, uh, you know uh, again to build up uh, this university and this university uh, has a very large campus uh, like one uh, one uh, near about 1 mile or 1 and a half kilometers you can say of length so such a huge uh, you know campus it was having and there was a dwar pandi you know a teacher is called dwar pani and who was the in charge of for the admission to the university so they are having a particular you know a criteria how to enter this university you know what 
set uh, rules, regulations, a proper setup. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, uh, a very, uh, uh, you can say, flourished, very systematic kind of university. And Shali Bhadra was the Kulpati or Chancellor of the university. And uh, uh, this university is, well, because it is having a very, you know, uh, infrastructure wise, it's very uh, properly uh, constructed. So eight big halls were there, Samagraha, that uh, the name of those uh, big halls and 300 study chambers or rooms or you know uh, theater like uh, structures were there and uh, this um, sometimes they have around this hyun sang only uh, wrote in his diary that 10000 students and 200 professor uh, were there at nalanda university so from ratio and proportion you can uh, find he what is the ratio of students and teacher so such a, a beautiful setup and they have uh, you know nine storied uh, library which is having uh, observatory tower also at the rooftop for the astronomical research so uh, this university is uh, like very much renowned for its cosmopolitan uh, character and also it was famous for its faculty uh, of logic so this is again a very uh, you know uh, renowned university you must remember few things regarding uh, these universities takshila and nalanda one or two question may come uh, uh, in this section the name of you know uh, name and some of the important things of these uh, universities. So most important institutions are Takshashila, Nalanda, uh, and others are also there. We'll uh, see some uh, important things about other universities also. And uh, in this Nalanda University, the admission criteria was uh, were supposed to be tough because examination, entrance examination was there, which was very difficult. And the passing rate is approximately, you know, three out of uh, ten students. So uh, they, they they are having a particular, uh, you know, uh, rules and particular system they have to uh, follow. And the minimum age limit was twenty years for the admission into the university. And the mode of, uh, or you can say, the method of teaching. Uh, was like uh, which we already discussed uh, maybe verbal or explanatory um, and then lectures and then debates and discussions so that type of uh, the uh, education pattern was there in Nalanda now the third one is Vallabhi now this Vallabhi uh, university was established in Saurashtra, uh, which is in modern Gujarat. And uh, the approximate time is sixth century. And it flourished for about 600 years, just imagine. And uh, till the 12th century when the foreign invasion invaders came into uh, this country. And uh, this was again, uh, uh, you know, discovered by or visited by the Chinese traveler Yu Sang and I Sing, the two had found this Vallabi in the western side of India and they found it like glorious as Nalanda. So, this is again a very uh, renowned university. And uh, but this uh, was just uh, not only for religious education. But other secular subjects were uh, also taught, like Artha Shastra, that is economics, then Niti Shastra, that is uh, law, and Chikitsa Shastra, that is medicine. So all those, uh, you know, fields and uh, subjects were also covered. So this university actually uh, mainly it is the center for Hinayana form of. Uh, Buddhism. 
and brahmanical science were also ta taught like vedas and uh, other uh, granthas are also were taught and discussed so vallabhi was uh, uh, running very uh, you know uh, a good position till uh, seven uh, around 700 ce you can say but uh, due to you know foreign uh, uh, invasions some of the portions were get destroyed and uh, many you know downfall uh, started so two famous scholars uh, were there um, they have written something about uh, this university but uh, it's not necessary to know all those things and in September uh, 2017, the government of India had you know, plans to revive this university again. So this is all about Vallabhi. Then uh, the next university is Vikram Shila. Vikram Shila is... Yes. yes. Ma'am, Hinayana is only word for women in Buddhism? No, 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 no. There are two sects of uh, Buddhism, right? Later, divided. one uh, is the Mahayana and uh, Hinayana. So Mahayana, you know, they uh, believe okay. uh, the worship of uh, Buddha, mm -hmm. the idol worship, Got and it. they believe in the teachings. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So the next one is Vikram Shila. The time. Uh, uh, of this university is roughly like 800 to you know 10 uh, 10 20s or uh, near 20s 30s or uh, 25 10 25 ce so roughly it is at 8th century and this university uh, vikram shila is uh, like it is called bihara or university is again a buddhist monastery and it was set up by the emperor dharmapala of pala dynasty uh, in uh, magadha magadha means uh, some portions of bihar or up in the banks of river ganga so the main subjects here uh, were again vyakaran logic philosophy tantra so overall uh, the uh, subjects covered are 14 vidyas, 18 shilps, and uh, 64 arts. So all a very, you know, wide range of knowledge um, were there in this uh, university. Karma Can you repeat that, ma'am, please, again? OK, subjects you want? Yes, ma'am, just now, whatever you said. OK. So. Uh, like the courses taught in uh, this uh, institution or this university, it covers Vyakaran, logic, philosophy, Tantra, Shastra, Karmakanda, all those rituals you know, which we follow during Yagna or any at, uh, particular occasions. Uh, we do some rituals. So all those uh, subjects, all those uh, Granthas and Veda they taught, but apart from that, overall, if you say so, there were 14 vidyas, like 14 uh, forms of vidyas, and 18 shilpa and 64 arts, which uh, embraces all the you know uh, wide range of knowledge. You can say, so what is the 18 uh, shilpa, man? What does shilpa, that mean? Shilpa is again, uh, you know, sculpture making or. Uh, statue or you know idol making that type of uh, art shilp okay okay yeah mm -hmm. and art covers all the music dance or any uh, other form of arts maybe painting drawing so all those 64 arts so that art, art, art. art. Uh, the various fields of art so 64 types of arts were taught like that so the admission was allowed to only those who you know uh, wanted to become monks or uh, you know they devote themselves to uh, that institution or to uh, the buddhist uh, monastery 
So uh, Vikram Shila appears to have had a more clearly, you know, hierarchy than uh, the other uh, Mahaviharas. So they are having certain uh, many, uh, you know, like uh, hierarchy. You don't have to learn that much, but uh, there were, you know, professors which are roughly uh, 116 numbers, and uh, I think this much is enough to. Uh, remember because if we go into deep it will be difficult to remember each and <laughs> the main points of each and every uh, university so we'll stop here and the next we'll cover the next university which is in uh, Odan, uh, Odantapuri now this university had been established long before the kings of uh, Pala dynasty and came into power in Magadha so uh, this Odan, uh, Odantapuri uh, University is uh, uh, could attain that uh, it could not attain that uh, level of fame and repute which uh, Nalanda and Vikramshila accomplished. But here, around thousands of monks and students resided, and you know uh, received education. So uh, this university also attracted some of the seekers from, uh, you know, Tibet and other parts near about uh, the country. The next one is uh, Jagadshala, Jagadala. Jagadala is uh, again a Pal king, Raja Ram Pal of Bengal, constructed a monastery and named uh, it as Jagadala. J Jagadala. And it remained a center of, again, it is also a Buddhist uh, education uh, university for about 100 years. And uh, most of the universities which we are discussing here are destroyed during 12th uh, century when, uh, you know, invasions uh, uh, like uh, came here. And... Uh, these invaders uh, destroyed most of the uh, things. Okay. So we are here in Jagdala, right? So there were many scholars, uh, you can say renounced uh, scholars from this university as well. And uh, um, next one is Mithila. Mithila, uh, it is in the Upanishadic uh, age. And this again uh, became a prominent seat of Brahmanical education. And it is also named as Videha. And uh, mostly uh, continued its glory from Raja Janak, um, which uh, who uh, up to uh, the Buddhist period. And later on, this place, uh, uh, you know, produced devotees of uh, Lord Krishna. So, uh, then again, uh, Brahmanical education and Upanishads and Vedas were taught here. And for famous poets like uh, Vidyapati, who had written in Hindi and Jaydev, uh, you know, and uh, Sanskrit literature also born here, it was supposed to be. So, uh, and there are various uh, subjects, uh, literature, art, you know, scientific subjects, they were... Um, taught here. Even up to the Emperor Akbar, it has continued to flourish uh, as an important center of education and culture. But slowly, slowly, uh, this uh, university loses, lost its, you know, uh, you can say the bright. Uh, system and the next one is Nadia. Nadia is again uh, it is situated at the confluence of Ganga 
and uh, Jalangi rivers in Bengal. And it was uh, formerly it was called Navadeep. And uh, education in Nadia universities was imparted at uh, three centers, Navadipa, Shantipur, and Gopalpura. So uh, this is, do you just uh, remember the names of these universities? Nothing much about them. And Ujjain, Ujjain is also famous for its uh, you know, secular le uh, learning, including mathematics and astronomy. In Ujjain, there, uh, there is also a Jantar Mantar to study, you know, astronomical uh, uh, configurations and uh, all those things. And other important centers of learning in South India were Salotgi, Inairam, Shringeri, and Kanchi. You just remember those names, but uh, remember few important things about the four or five universities which we studied. Now, a uh, decline of uh, this ancient education started uh, with the you know, uh, Islamic invasion. So most of the education centers were destroyed. And uh, that's why the slowly, slowly, this Vedic system of education moved to uh, south. And then it uh, was under the patronage of uh, Vijayanagara ruler. And then uh, this, uh, uh, again, some of the, you know, uh, the things that Grantha say. And uh, this is uh, in place of this ancient uh, education universities, the Madarasa, uh, they established mosque, which is uh, attached to the mosque, where the Islamic schools, they open up and, you know, all the... Uh, prayers, Islamic prayers, writing, reading, they uh, started uh, to teach uh, students from uh, that culture, that religion. And Muslim girls are not allowed to enter, only they are for, they were for boys. And Muslim girls, they uh, study mostly at home. So during Mughal era, the Persian was the court language. Okay, the Persian language, uh, they, they used to uh, teach in this language. All the uh, uh, writing uh, material was that in uh, Persian language itself. And uh, they have to, you know, they are mo more subjects than the religious one. Like uh, they study history, they studied uh, they taught the ethics, law, administration, all the court protocol and all that. And uh, this uh, education for girls was uh, an exception. It was not like compulsory to, you know, uh, to give them uh, some education or they are only meant for uh, like boys and uh, because they, according to their uh, interest, they uh, they were taught like uh, uh, apprenticeship or commercial or you know uh, the war kind of uh, training they have given they had to be like that then uh, um, uh, then uh, this Britisher came into uh, the country. And they made some, you know, policies or uh, they rectify the system of education uh, in India. So you can say the modern education began in India under the British rule because uh, they, uh, you know, uh, uh, they meant the system, a process through which, you know, any society handles and you know, educational problems. So uh, they uh, made certain policies, certain rules, regulations, uh, so that uh, they designed a framework, you can say, of educational policy to involve a process in which various, uh, you know, uh, stakeholders analyze, generate, and then implement certain um, policies, and they 
redesign, you can say, those policies. So uh, they made a defined system of education. So uh, they like uh, they uh, you know in uh, go through a certain steps. Like first they uh, uh, studied the problems. Then they uh, make policies according to the, those problems. See what are the problems? What type of education they want to give? What will be the mode of uh, education? What will be the subjects? And uh, how they you know uh, involve those uh, uh, natives um, which belongs to that particular place to you know to attract towards the education system so the pro process by which a government or a society translates their educational vision into a programs and activities you know so that uh, they did and uh, they are able to deliver the outcomes so they want that desired change in the real. So they made the policies accordingly, so that uh, you know uh, the person who uh, was having the education or you know, coming for uh, some knowledge, so they uh, are able to make some decisions uh, which are you know uh, uh, useful for their government. So there are basically three basic agents of uh, modern education in India, which uh, played a very uh, important role uh, in our at present uh, education system. So uh, the main three agents were there. The first one is the British government or the East India Company. And the second one is the Christian missionaries. They uh, also build here various, uh, you know, uh, their associations, their uh, church. There also they uh, uh, taught their religion, their, uh, you know, uh, many things. And then uh, Indian intellectuals and reformers, they are also, they also played a very vital role. Uh, to make this, uh, you know, the foundation of this modern uh, India's education. So what are the various rules, various, you know, how this uh, uh, modern higher education evolved during uh, the 70s to till now? So there are various, uh, you know, uh, sequentially there are various rules, various policies they made. Uh, at, so there are, uh, you know, some uh, important years and some important, uh, um, like, uh, dates and uh, some committees were set up. So you have to remember uh, some of them uh, because uh, all of all those uh, years and all those names of the committees will be difficult for you to remember. but. Uh, Try to uh, read all those uh, pages once or twice so that you'll remember some of the date. So the first one, are we having time to move? Yes, we are having some time. So uh, the evolution of this, my voice is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, Evolution of this higher learning and research in post-independence uh, India. The first one is the year 1781. Now, in 1781, Warren Hastings established the Kolkata, uh, Calcutta, earlier it was Calcutta Madarsa for teaching of Muslim law. Because before Britisher, most of the regions were governed by uh, Muslims, uh, like Mughals. So they uh, started with, uh, you know, uh, to establishment uh, of Madarsa. So the Warren Hastings was the first person. And in 1791, Sanskrit College was started in Varanasi uh, by Jonathan Duncan for the study of Hindu philosophy and law. 
And in 1813, the Charter Act came uh, with some split in the government about the nature of uh, education, whether it should be traditional or whether it should be like uh, modern. So 1830, uh, uh, this uh, first step towards the education being made an objective of the government. So uh, they have to decide whether which area they want to, you know, or move ahead. So in 1817, the oldest college was set up in Calcutta. And in 2010, it is converted into residency university. So the oldest college was set up in Calcutta. You must remember 1817. And in 1818, the oldest university, which is the Senate of Sarampur College, um, which got university status in 1829. So this is this was the oldest. Uh, this is the oldest university, which was set up in 1818. Yes. Where is Sarampur? Sorry. The oldest university is Senate of Serampur College. So where is it? Senate of Serampur College. So that's what I'm asking. Where where this where was this? At present. Is it existing now? Right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So where is it? Serampur College. Uh, yes, you can say. What are you asking? I was asking the place. Achha, where it is? Yeah. Then uh, you you mean uh, uh, the city? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think it is in Calcutta, most probably. Okay. Yeah, you can uh, search or I'll search and tell you tomorrow. Most yes. probably it should be in, yes. Because the first uh, college or university they uh, established, uh, the British established, was in Calcutta only. It's West Bengal. Yeah, this was the first city they, uh, you know, paid attention. Okay, so in 1823, the Mount Stewart Elphinstone uh, minutes were there, and they stressed on the need of establishing science and English school. So. Uh, because of this menace, in 1835, Lord Macaulay advocated uh, that efforts to make natives of the country thoroughly good English scholars. So, uh, uh, including English as a language in our education system, it was advocated by Lord Macaulay, and uh, he gave uh, some minutes for that in 1835. And the same year, 1835, under Lord William Bantic, it was decided to introduce English as a medium of instruction in the schools and uh, in the universities. Now, in 1835, after this minutes and after uh, the Alphinstons uh, Committee report, this Elphiston College in Bombay and uh, Calcutta Medical College were set. So you remember this name, uh, this year, 1835, Elphiston College, Bombay, Elphiston College in Bombay and Calcutta Medical College were set. And in 1854, Sir Charles Wood dispatched. This is again a very important year, 1854. Uh, this uh, Charles Wood Dispatch is called the Magna Carta of English Education in India and recommended to create a properly articulated scheme of education from primary school to the university. So it gives a proper uh, way to how to, uh, you know, uh, process how to go from primary school to university, what should be the 
you know proper uh, hierarchy or proper curriculum of those uh, educational the complete education system so remember this year 1854 sir charles wood dispatch this is called the magna carta of english education in india and in 1857 uh, the university of Kolkata, Calcutta, and University of Bombay, and University of Madras uh, established. This is again a very important year, eighteen fifty four. Sorry, eighteen fifty seven, where these universities uh, were established. Uh, remember these uh, year, uh, years, eighteen thirty five, eighteen fifty four, eighteen fifty seven. in 1882 uh, 83 uh, hunter commission uh, was set up and it suggested the segregation of primary and higher education uh, so there should be a separation between the two like the primary uh, education and the higher education there should be a proper division and proper you know the faculty the education the examination pattern uh, the number of subjects so that way uh, the segregation is very much important it was suggested by hunter commission segregation of primary and higher education and then in 1902 universities commission was set up under sir tom sedley to inquire into the condition and prospects of setting up universities in india so in 1904 indian universities act was passed again it is very important here 1904 where this university act uh, indian universities act was passed on the basis of that in 1905 the national council of education was set up by swadeshi nationalist leader and very uh, various leaders and jadhavpur university is the result of it and after that uh, uh, shri rabindranath tagore started shanti niketan in bengal during this era and uh, one more uh, a university which is 1921 vishwa bharati university uh, which was set up by the tagore itself and uh, that central university is an institution of national importance now so uh, you, um, i haven't written it please note it all right in 1921 uh, the central university now it is central university earlier it was vishwa hindu vishwa bharati university set up by tagore and this is the only university uh, i have included this but didn't mention in this slide this is the only university uh, where prime minister is the chancellor otherwise who is the chancellor of the university governor yeah all right so just remember this this is the university uh, where the chancellor is prime minister all right uh in 1917 sadler commission which uh, popularly uh, called as calcutta university commission and it suggested the separation of intermediate education from the degree colleges and uh, it was the precursor of 10 plus 2 plus 3 system which we have now in most of the states and setting up of central advisory board of education cabe again remember this 1970 sadler commission uh, suggested that separation of intermediate education from the degree colleges 
and it was the precursor of 10 plus 2 plus 3 system and setting up of central advisory board of education and on behalf of that in 1920 the cabe which is the central advisory board of education this is the oldest advisory body of government was established and uh, it is it was dissolved in 23 and then revived in 1935 and in 1925 inter university board after uh, that later times it is uh, known as association of indian universities it was set up and in 1929 hartog commission focused on the equality quality and standards of the education and uh, in 34 there was sapru, sapru committee and uh, it focused upon the unemployment issues so main main thing you have to remember which committee which year and what uh, it focused upon so sapru committee focused upon unemployment harto commission 29 uh, it focused upon the standards of education Inter-University Board or Association of Indian Universities, same thing. It was set up in 1925. In 1937, Abbott would report. Again, this is important. Recommended English as a medium of instructions at university level. All right. In 37 itself, Vardha scheme of education recommended Nai Talim or basic education. And this was the recommendation of Mahatma Gandhi. So you must remember in 1937, a board would report recommended English as a medium of instructions, uh, instructions at university level. And in same year, 1937, Bardha scheme of education recommended Nai Talim or the basic education given to the students. And this was recommended by Mahatma Gandhi. So I think we'll stop here. From the next slide, we'll um, come up, cover tomorrow. So anything you want to ask, you can ask. Ma'am, can, can I get these slides? Sorry, I can't hear you. Can I get this PDF? Yes, you will get, but uh, let me cover it first. Complete okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah. After that.